resistance. Uh, specifically, resistance is the third of the three quantities we need to understand to start thinking about circuits. And Ohm's law is the rule that explains how they relate. Uh, we want to talk the physical properties of a resistor a little bit and uh, look at series and parallel resistor arrangements. We'll start with this. Uh, if you were to build a circuit like this, which you could build with your castle kit, or you could build it in the simulation, it turns out that if you color code the circuit, the bulbs must have the same voltage, even though they're two different bulbs long and around, same voltage as the battery. Now, if you were to build it, you would notice that one bulb is dimmer than the other. Um, that means that if the voltages are the same, you might say, well, why is it dimmer? Um, we would say the only other quantity we know about is that we have, um, you know, resistance. Well, we don't even know resistance. We only have voltage. Um, and so that voltage is the same. So the current has to be different. And so this tells us then, um, if we know that the resistance is less and we get more current, less or more resistance, less current. What do we notice about the bulb brightness? Well, as the voltage and the current increase, the bulb, well, the brightness increases. So the current is proportional to the voltage and as resistance goes up, current goes down. Um, so when we put this together and we come up with something we call Ohm's law. Um, we also often write it this way, delta V equals IRR or the voltage is current times resistance. Although causally you apply a voltage and you divide it by the resistance and that gives you a current. So I like this first form a little bit better, at least for thinking about at that kind of sample circuit. Um, I've got it set up here. I can switch to schematic mode. Um, here you see a battery that we can connect just, um, I think my example showed two battery cells. So we'll start with that. Um, and we'll connect those up and the circuit will run, right? Here's our conventional current. Um, I'll switch back to this picture so you can see the brightness, right? One of these has higher resistance, one of them lower, you have a bright one. Um, but then if I break the circuit and pop this in with a brighter voltage or higher voltage, we get more current flowing. Um, and the, they're both turned brighter, even though they're at slightly different values. So that's kind of the, the key idea here is that changing up the voltage, right, can cause current to flow faster with a given resistance. And that here we have two different uh, parts of the circuit. One bulb is getting a much faster current flow than the other, showing up brighter given the same voltage. Got it. Now, anything you put in a circuit has resistance. However, things that don't do anything else other than have resistance are things we call resistors. Um, and Ohm's law is empirical. That means we observe it. We see how it works. Um, it's only true for materials that are ohmic. That's a little bit circular. But basically what that means is if a circuit element has a linear relationship between voltage and current, we call that ohmic. The resistance is just the ratio of voltage to current, and it's constant throughout. Um, something like an LED light bulb is actually really interesting. You can apply a range of voltages and no current, and then all of a sudden it will turn on. Um, and then once it turns on, the current will, you know, increase and increase and increase um, with a constant voltage, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, incandescent bulbs sort of do this. As you increase uh, the voltage, you get this kind of uneven change in current, which is interesting. Um, and so incandescent light bulbs, um, like the light bulbs in your kit, are non-ohmic. And you can actually deal with this fact if you want in your simulation by going to the advanced settings and adding a real bulb, and then it'll put it at the bottom of your circuit element list. Um, it looks different because you'll see the kind of this reddish thing, um, and you'll see some slightly different look of the bulb um, if you want to see something that behaves in a non-ohmic way. Uh, if There are a couple of cases where it's really good to see this, and I might have you do that at a later date. Um, but I wanted to, before we go into that example, I wanted to pause and kind of show you in simulation, uh, moving on. Let's do an example or two. So in this example, we could color code the circuit, um, but we know that if there is six volts in the battery, there's only one resistive element. So it has a voltage of six volts across it. Ohm's law would say the current through this resistor is six volts divided by 12 ohms or half an amp. 
And that has to be the current everywhere in the circuit because there's only one, right? Um, we would also want to color code this circuit, you know, individual resistors. Uh, we have a current going through this same current everywhere. Two amps times five ohms would give us 10 volts. Two amps times 10 ohms would give us 20 volts. And then if you do the loop rule to go around, you would say, oh, 10 plus 20 is 30 volts. Uh, we could color code another circuit. This one's a parallel circuit. So the three amps, or sorry, the 30 volts we would have is divided by 10 ohms to get three amps. And the 30 volts we have is divided by five ohms to get six amps. That means the total current running through the battery is six plus three or nine amps. So before I move on, I would just say that I point, want to point out that you're still using the loop and junction rule, but you're now using a third tool, Ohm's law. So you're going to combine all three of them together to answer these questions. So what's going on in a resistor? Well, if you think of a resistor as just a wire um, of a special type, it could be made of a particular material. It could be a particular length or area. And the third thing that could matter is how hot it is. Um, and that's kind of an interesting thing as well. So the big things about a resistor is that the bigger the radius, or sorry, the bigger the resistance, right? Obviously, the slower the electrons flow. But the longer it is, the bigger the resistance, and the wider it is, the smaller the resistance. So those are our relationships. There's also one other piece which has to do with the conductivity or what the material is in it, and that's rho for resistivity. We really reuse the symbol rho. It gets a little annoying. Um, and sigma is conductivity in this context. So one over sigma is rho. Um, for something that's like made of this a pure material, like all copper, copper wire, something like that, the resistance of that piece of wire would be rho times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. And that rho is defined at a particular temperature for a particular material. And these are the things we measure and we look up and we calculate. We can't really just like predict and calculate them. So we have to test them. The analogy is that if you have a pump pumping water around a loop and you put something like a filter in that uh, loop, you will slow down the flow of water. And that's what a resistor does. Um, you could ask yourself, would resistance go up or down with temperature? And that's sort of a question of, do, are things able to allow flow of electrons through better when they're cold or hot? Um, as it turns out, as it gets hot, there's more vibrations in the lattice, and so it makes it hard for the electrons to flow. So that resistance, resistivity increases. The natural consequence of this is superconductivity on the other end. If you can decrease the temperature enough, so things aren't vibrating at all, down to absolute zero, you can have no resistance or no resistivity, which is kind of cool. Um, you can see that a little bit here. You'll notice the resistivity goes up on the uh, y-axis or the vertical axis, and the horizontal axis has temperature. And below a certain temperature, every resistor has zero resistivity. That's superconductivity. It's mostly linear. There's something like copper. Um, they do, it does sort of fall off at different temperatures. So that's worth looking at. Um, so which resistor has the highest resistance, the long one or the short one? That'd be the long. The thicker, the thin, the thin, and the hotter, the cold, the hot, right? So hot, thin, long wires have high resistance. So short wires that are thick, and cold are the best thing. And this is why you cool electronics. It makes the electrical transmission more efficient. They behave better in part. Um, you try to make your connections really short and you you know, use big thick wires, like a big heavy duty extension cord when you're powering things that require a lot of current. So an example problem. You can find the resistance based on these basic fundamental quantities. If you know the resistivity, the length and the cross-sectional area, this is a you know cylinder, so it's easy. It's just a circle for the area. You can calculate the resistance. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, R is very small in this case. So the delta V in the wire is going to be very, very negligible. So this points out that you're not going to have a big voltage drop on a pure copper wire over a relatively short distance. Right? This is a millimeter, a three meter long copper wire. It's a millimeter in diameter. Now, most of our wires are smaller than a millimeter. Um, but they're also much shorter. So you can get some resistance, but it's not a huge thing. And we usually ignore it for our basic calculations. A couple things to know about circuit elements, right? 
So far, we've got resistors. We're also going to look at capacitors and inductors. And uh, next time, we'll kind of look at the series parallel relationship. But these are our basic fundamental circuit information. Um, when we do talk about series and parallel, we've already seen these. Series, they're on the same branch. They have to have the same current. And they could have different voltages. Parallel, they have to be on different branches. They may have the same current, but they must have the same voltage. So we've got a couple of different uh, sets of arrangements of circuit elements that we're going to try. Um, and you can go ahead and look at these, but we've got series, parallel, series, parallel, 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 and series. Uh, color coding can really reveal a lot to help you figure that out. So um, that's the overview of Ohm's Law. We'll do a little bit of practice with that as we go.